And I'm so pleased to introduce someone many of you know, Buddy Fanuf. He's the president of Fanuf Funeral Homes, and he's going to share very interesting information on non-traditional funerals. Great. Okay. So I'm going to give you a um, an hour and 40 minute presentation in about 10 minutes, if that's okay. So I'm going to power through this pretty quickly. Uh, we did this presentation um, quite a while ago. We had about 100 people in our in our room uh, a couple of years ago. So really talking about what we call a non-traditional funeral or some options. But before that, a little history. So in the old days, which was pre-10 years ago, pretty much everyone had a casket. Everyone went to the church. Everyone went to the cemetery. So that was sort of the traditional American funeral from the 1700s up until the early 2000s. But now there are a lot of different options family has available. What, what is a non-traditional funeral? Well, it's cremation. It's green burials, it's body donations, it's home funerals. And again, funeral, non-traditional funerals, that maybe not the right word, it's really non-traditional, for lack of a better term, final disposition options. But there are some other things too. There's body farms, alkaline hydrolysis, there's living funerals, virtual funerals, and now there's something even called destination funerals. Um, so why has this changed? I think people's attitudes um, towards organized religions have changed. People who are living longer may not want the long, drawn-out, multi-day service and ceremony, less homogeneous families, families living further apart, um, influence of uh, non-Judeo-Christian ethnic groups, especially here in New Hampshire. We have a lot of other ethnic groups that are moved into our community, the Bhutanese community, the Hindu community. Um, pricing has gotten very expensive for cemetery, funeral home property, nursing home costs are really diminishing assets of folks and lots of disruption going on in the funeral industry, discount brokers, internet brokers. So that's why the American funeral has changed. So who's selecting them? Uh, if you look at this chart, about 73% of, and this is New Hampshire residents are now selecting cremation, 21% traditional funerals and all the rest are equaling the, um, the balance of that. Um, talking about cremation pretty quickly, nationwide, the cremation rate last year was about 58% in New Hampshire. Guess where it was last year? Almost 80%, about 76%. And nationwide, the cremation rate is expected to increase over 70% in the next decade or so. Um, and if you look back here, back in 2015 was the first year that cremations actually ellipsed um, burial options. So that's cremation. Most people know about cremation. I wanna spend some time now um, talking about Green burials are non-traditional, um, no chemicals, no embalming, no vaults, biodegradable container or no casket, and the family is a very active participant. There are three green burial cemeteries in New Hampshire um, compared to a more traditional burial where there is embalming and caskets and vaults and funeral homes. Uh, here's an example of a green burial um, service that we were participating in. You can see it's pretty much all hands on deck with the family. They shrouded and wrapped the person, dug their own grave, lowered it into the grave site. So definitely participation in the family. Uh, there's something called home blended funerals where families may opt to have part of the ceremony and service at home. They retain custody and control. They bathe and dress the body. They have vigils, do all the paperwork. Um, and they may hire us at the end, maybe to do the cremation, maybe to do the transport to the cemetery. So those are home or blended funerals. Here's an example of a home funeral that we were involved in back a few years ago. Also, there's body donation, which is not the same as organ donation. Um, you can either donate to a medical school, medical research facility. Not all body donation programs accept the body, so you might want to have a plan B. Um, and you always want to read the consent form to know what the, the donor organization can do. There are some for-profit organizations that can actually sell your body. Um, in medical schools, um, you need a consent. You can't do anything until the person has, you have to do it prior to the person passing. There's about a 70% acceptance rate. Only Dartmouth has a medical school in New Hampshire that it has an anatomical gift program, although we work with Harvard, Tufts, UMass. Uh, family will get cremated remains back in about two years. Um, medical schools do not compensate the family and they only cover some of the costs. But there are for-profit body donation programs out there. These are national ones, Science Care, 
You may have heard about MedCure is another big one here in New England. Um, and these are for profit. They, they sell off body parts for research. They sell off body parts to um, different organizations. So it's, um, it's a pretty, pretty lucrative situation. That's why you wanna read all the disclosures. There's also things called body farms. This one is in Tennessee. You can actually donate your body for anthro anthropological research. Um, there is also resumation, which is called alkaline hydrolysis. It's called green cremation. Um, it's used with a, a lye material. And um, the question is, it's not allowed in New Hampshire. It is allowed in Vermont and in Maine, um, but it's another process that's an alternative to more traditional cremation. There's also virtual funerals. People are actually having services before the person passes away. Um, and the saying is, why well, miss all the nice things people will say about you at, at the time of your death. There is also, um, and I apologize to the top, there's also uh, virtual funerals that are now being run on Facebook, uh, live streaming. I've, had, I've seen, um, this is a service that we did years ago. The family actually had a virtual uh, funeral service in 2014. So different type of a non-traditional funeral. And there's destination funerals. Um, Disney has actually got in the funeral business, not with caskets, but you can bring your family members urn and rent their facilities and have a nice little memorial service. Um, I know Hilton does it as well. Hilton does funerals. So the last slide here is, um, is really cost. Traditional funerals anywhere from, you know, fairly inexpensive to very expensive. Can you do it yourself? Not really. And from a scale of one to 10, how practical is it? I mean, yeah, it's pretty, we do traditional funerals all the time. Uh, cremation, can't really do yourself cremation, pretty straightforward. Home funerals get a little bit less expensive, a little bit more involved with the family. You can do some of it, if not all of it yourself. Logistically, it gets a little more involved. Same thing with green burials, and you can see body donations, body farms. Um, not until you start getting into destination funerals and virtual and alcohol and hydrolysis the practicality of it gets a little bit more, more challenging. So there's my nine minute presentation and hopefully under 10. Do we have time? I don't know if we have time for any questions at all or. Absolutely. So you can ask them, unmute yourself or type them into the box or into the chat room. Buddy, I have a question. Do you okay. see green? Do you see green cremation uh, coming to New Hampshire anytime soon? It's the, the issue is there's you're creating a demand for one that doesn't exist. We're actually looking at a resumation of green cremation at our one of our funeral homes in Vermont where it's allowed, but it's a you know it's a half a million dollar piece of equipment plus the room, so it's going to be significantly more expensive than cremation. So the idea is, you know, do, do you invest in that and charge something that's probably going to be double the price of cremation and will, will there be a demand for it? Don't know the answer yet. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, and we need, to, we need to move on to our next sponsor, but there is a question in the chat room, buddy, about why was body farming expensive? If you could answer that in the chat, that would be great. Well, the reason body farming is expensive is because it's the logistics of getting the funeral home in New Hampshire or wherever sent to another funeral home, in this case, Tennessee, to then bring the body to the body farm. So a lot of it has to do with logistics of flying the body, dealing with two funeral homes and getting it to the body farm. That's why it's an expensive option. It's just really the transportation okay. fees. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much, You're buddy. You're welcome. Thank all you. Right. Everyone. Okay.